guys, welcome to part two of this session. Uh, last week we talked a little bit about uh, some practices on filtering and understanding the difference between tables and columns. And uh, we ended up seeing some best practices on not only how to avoid the need to use the filter function for certain types of filtering, uh, we also saw some ways to just uh, clean up the code and uh, get the measures to run a little bit faster. So now I guess, uh, Daniel, we're gonna talk about some other stuff related to that similar topic, but a couple of other bad examples in there. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Uh, thanks for the intro, Reed. Absolutely. So, just like Reed said, in part one, we uh, talked about why you should not uh, use the filter function over the whole table when applying uh, filters for performance reasons. In uh, part two, we'll talk about a different aspect of um, using uh, filter over the whole table, and that's going to be the results that you're getting. So here's the setup. This is uh, just sales by color, so nothing fancy. I'm going to be showing each measure one by one. Mm -hmm. So let's um, go with sales first. So this is nothing special at all, just the sum of the column. Now, all product balance, or yeah, in this case, it's all product because I, I just have colors here. Um, it's uh, calculate over the first measure, and we're ignoring any filters on color. So as expected, we get the same value for every color, even colors that don't have any sale. So, so far, nothing special, right? Now, yeah, okay. let's have a look at the third measure, single quantity balance. So here again, we're applying some filters to the first measure, which is sales. And the filter is, we're filtering the sales table and filtering where quantity is one. So that gives us, results similar to uh, sales, except it's lower as expected because we're applying a filter on quantity. So we're only counting those sales where quantity is one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the values are smaller than the first column. That's expected, that's fine. Now, I've got another measure that's not in the table yet. Here's the formula. It's very similar, except we're applying the same filter as before on quantity to the second measure, which is all product balance. Sorry, actually, it's bad name. It should not have been product balance, should be sales. Okay. Um, maybe uh, let me, yeah, sales. Excellent. Okay. Uh, yeah. So same filter as in measure number three, same filter, except it's a different measure that we apply this filter to. Now, when I add this measure to the table visual, what do you expect to see? So you're, I mean, you're, you're, you're applying calculate twice essentially now to, to a calculation and you're applying an inner and an outer filter. Uh, can, can you show me the other one again? This one? So this yep. first one ignores all filters from the product table and returns a result. And then that again is wrapped in a calculate function and then uh, having sales quantity equals one from the fact table applied to it. I mean, it, it should be, an, it's an and statement, I would imagine, then between the two of them. So then you have a quantity equals uh, one from the sales table and then ignoring all filters from the product table. So, uh, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I would imagine you're still gonna get a repeating value. But it'll be the, it'll be the grand total of like 1,221, you know, 242. Will will be repeating on every row. I think. Yeah, that's what I would expect as well, uh, yeah. in a way. And it's not that. And nothing happens. Yeah. Like, Interesting. See, the same as single quantity balance. So what's not happening is we're not removing filters from the product table. So it's. Uh, you know, that same result is uh, measure number three. So, so it's, that? yeah, it, it's keeping the, it's keeping your second filter essentially that's, uh, but not the, not the original filter from the first measure. Yeah, so, so we keep this one. Uh -huh. And then when we go to this measure, this filter uh -huh. is not applied. Yeah, that's curious. Yeah, so maybe to understand what's going on, let's see what happens when we get 
say filters that are applied to the same thing maybe. So let's do one thing. We'll do um, actually let's do let's do a card, and we've got different colors. Okay, so let's do color red, and it's going to be calculate values for the color. It's a bit silly as a formula, um, just for illustration purposes. Okay. So we'll add that the card red, right? Actually, let's do that in <laughs> um, here. Uh, we'll just do values on rows. Okay, we'll use that later. Okay, now yeah. let's do another measure, and it's going to be a color blue over red. This intelligence just won't disappear. <laughs> um, okay. How lower worlds blue. Okay. Now, once I add that to the matrix, what do we expect to see? Assuming the first one's going to be ignored and then it'll be blue in this one. Yeah. It's actually red. Yeah, so why is that? That's because filters are applied from the outside to the inside. Um, so here we've got product color blue applied first, mm -hmm. and then we go inside. And then inside we've got color equals red. And because that's applied later, it overrides the blue filter. So it's. I am surprised it's that they're like, not actually being. Con concatenated with an and function because otherwise like if i if i did calculate product color red comma product color blue you'd return nothing because it, it's an and statement and they can't exist because it would have to be two values that would not be returned that's right so these filters are in conflict gotcha yep and the one that's inside wins so they're not combined in and fashion just because they're in conflict Otherwise, yes, they would be combined. But here, one is inside the other. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, something that took me a while to get my head around. <laughs> not, not what I expected, definitely. Like, just like you, I thought there would be nothing, because nothing can be blue and red at the same time, right? I mean, yep, not yep. in this case. <laughs> yeah. So what's happening here? Like, first of all, how do you fix this? Well, if we get rid of filter and just filter the column just like this, then yeah, we get the expected result, which is one, two, two, one, two, four, two, repeated for all the colors. Now that's okay. expected. So what's going on? Now, if we go back, and we cannot go back because I cannot <clears throat> press control that. <laughs> is it because it's limiting the scope of the the filter uh, to only apply to the sales table, so it can't look at the product table anymore when it applies this first? Or let, let's see. Here's how I understand it, and maybe I'm wrong. So let, let's um, put it back. So here's how I understand it. First, we apply this filter, mm -hmm. and by the way, every time you filter a whole table, it's not just that table; it's the expanded table. What's an expanded table? It's a table that includes all the related tables. In this Correct. case, we've got the product table. It is in a relation, in a one-to-many relationship with sales. So this table is sales plus the product table, mm. right? Without a filter applied so to it. So that's that filter. Yeah, that's that filter. Yeah. Now inside all product sales, we've got remove filters on product, but it's just that product table. You know, we still have the filter on the expanded sales table, and that puts mm. it back. So we're not canceling out the filter on the expanded portion of the sales table. So it's if still you had, there. If, if you had removed filter sales on here, though, then that would cancel it out. Yes. Yep. So we can we can actually uh, test that. Mm 
And here, let's do sales. Yep, just like you said, yep. now it's canceling the filter out because it's uh, inside and therefore it has higher priority over the mm -hmm. outside filter. Yep. Uh, so yeah, this is how you can get the results that you don't expect when you apply the filter to a table. So again, I think it's it's also in this situation. It's also important to uh, be careful when you are referencing other measures, especially that already have filters inside of them and the direction that it applies. Yeah. It. Because the when you think of SQL uh, and, and other stuff, usually when you have a subquery, it's the subquery gets calculated first, including any filters until uh, and then the, the outer layer, which will then be calculated second. But in this case, it's the uh, second layer first uh, that gets calculated, and then the inner layer actually put uh, can overwrite those changes if there are conflicting filters. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, again, the takeaway is that you should filter columns, not tables, unless you know exactly what you're doing. And in some cases, it is advisable to filter a um, table, or maybe just apply the table as a filter when you're with many-to-many -many relationships. Exactly. Then that makes sense. Yeah. But then that's outside of scope of uh, this particular <laughs> video. Maybe we'll yeah. have a look at it uh, next time. Excellent. No, I appreciate yeah, that's this. It for Thank today. you. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Plus, if you have any comments for a future video, go ahead and add that to the comment section down below. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member.